This is the Cool Kids philosopher and uh, intellectual scion of the conservative movement sitting down with, I guess, uh, I don't know who this guy Alex O'Connor is. I guess he's a... Um, he's an uh, atheist. An atheist. And, um, I mean, imagine being Ben Shapiro, who spends all his days trying to... It's feelings, not facts. Mm-hmm. Dictating who's a Jew, who's not a Jew by, um, I guess, uh, somehow he was decreed that ability. Who thinks a lot about these uh, religious um, uh, uh, questions, espousing the idea that religion provides bedrock principles that are immutable, a morality that is immutable, which is the value of religion. Immutable morals. There is something that is good. There is something that is bad. Religion helps us uh, determine which is which. And they do not change. And here is uh, Ben getting caught up and realizing he's contradicting himself. Watch him stammer and try and sort of like uh, dance away from this. And, and frankly, the, the guy he's interviewing him is too nice about it hotly fought kind of argument inside biblical circles about all this stuff, which again is one of the reasons why I said right up top that when it gets to, I can't just open the Bible and interpret the text as I would see fit. You say, well, I, I don't like this verse right here. Contradictory? I'm, what was that? You, you say that scripture is contradictory? Well, I say that, that scripture is, some, some scripture is time bound and some scripture is not. So the, the, the easy one, that, the, the sort of easy way to distinguish is that when the Bible says not to do a thing, mm -hmm. then that tends to be non-time bound. And when it says to do a thing. And when it says to do a thing, that may be a temporary permission structure, mm -hmm. but it, it could also be a wooing. Uh, and by, by the way, again, I'm not speaking out of turn here. This has been uh, 1,500 years of Jewish reinterpretation of H.E. Fatoar, to take a quick example, right? That, sorry, the, 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 uh, the war bride. Uh, that, like the, the, the long-standing Talmudic tradition, which again is almost 2,000 years old at this point, is that that was deliberately an attempt to avoid mass war rape, which again, you can you can scoff at that, but mass war rape happened on this continent 70 years ago when the Russians literally raped everyone <laughs> as they came into Germany. So you know, the, these evils continue to exist in the human heart. Even if this was a liberalizing force, and even if this was uh, uh, not as bad as other slavery, do you think that the ownership of other human beings under the conditions of the Hebrew Bible are immoral. Yes. So how do you account for God commanding something which you now see to be, or, or, or rather permitting something and explicitly and giving you details about how to do something which is proactively immoral? Because permitting, he's not permitting me, per permitting my great 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 to do something immoral. Now pause it for one second. Just so the people understand what's going on here. The Hebrew Bible, uh, I think it's in Numbers, uh, though I'm, I'm not as familiar with the with any of the uh, Bibles, uh, frankly. Um, outlines, you know, uh, outlines rather, you know, the the manner in which you keep slaves. And um, he is asking, like, how do you reconcile that God uh, said it was okay to keep slaves, or at least uh, felt it was okay enough that we're going to give you the outlines on how you do it. Like there are specific, um, you know, you can't right. just be a jerk about it. it it's not just like, a description but, of like, say, you know, violence done by God or something. It's an explicit guide po guidebook yeah. on how to, to be a slave under, owner. Uh, uh, yeah. and, um, and, and Shapiro is now saying like, well, he wasn't telling me, because I guess the Torah is not completely timeless. I guess it was, not. Which is weird. Because you would think if God writes a document that he, will, he and I do mean he, um, could see all of time and uh, do it. Like, I'm not making this document just for, you know, this isn't just apply on the Wednesday that I wrote it in, uh, right. you know, uh, 5,000 years ago. It, this this applies for all the time. But, immutable, as you say. But he makes an argument that there has been what I would call rationalization uh, of this document to maintain its uh, authority, but also to rationalize what God really meant was mm -hmm. uh, in this time. But uh, here we go. Immoral. Because permitting, he's not permitting me, per permitting 
my great 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 to do something immoral to do something to do something immoral that in the time was not considered immoral it wasn't considered immoral but was it immoral now 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 who's immoral by the Judeo Christian tradition sure by by today's standards developed under the Judeo Christian tradition immoral so so by the way you're 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 living off the you're okay now Ponzi see what he just blew the the uh, O'Connor says that's moral relativism. If something can be morally okay in one context and it's not in another context, you have to accept the idea of moral relativism, which, of course, the entire infrastructure of everything that uh, Shapiro proposes or supposes to believe is based on the idea of the immutability of the moral precepts that religion provides. But yet, he's just saying, like, well, it, it fluctuates with the times. Now, remember, this, the Torah, is God's word. Mm -hmm. These are the same people who don't believe in a living constitution. Like, the idea that... Um, we can't have gun control because there wasn't gun control in 1778. And yet, he makes excuses for the word of God. All right, just go back a little bit because you can see how quickly, as soon as the guy brings up moral relativism, Shapiro is just going to do his famous gish gallop through the whole thing because he doesn't want to address that and he's hoping the guy doesn't stick with it something to do that something in immoral that in the time was not considered immoral it wasn't considered immoral right. but was it immoral now now by now standards, now, by today's now standards that were developed by the judeo-christian tradition sure by, by today's standards developed under the judeo-christian tradition immoral so so Which, by the way you're, you're you're living off the you're, you're again not to get back to the town holland argument you're living off the remains of this i mean where's your morality think, coming but, from but who's the moral relativist now i mean i mean it seems that a moment ago you say that the great the great success of religion is providing a sort of uh, untouchable moral basis that sort of transcends human affairs and human debate and now when I say, well, look at this, open your own religious scripture and look at this blatant immorality, you say, yeah, but well, that was considered to be fine at the time. It's considered to be uh, bad now by the progress of Judeo-Christian there, there, there's a question that, Who's the moral relativist? Well, that's not, it's not relativistic to say that, the, that a thing that is wrong today is considered wrong today because of a tradition that developed over time. The that's question I'm asking is, is not, was it considered right or wrong at the time it of was, biblical it slavery? It was wrong. Was yeah. it wrong? Uh, it was wrong then to hold a slave. Yes, it was wrong then to hold a slave, obviously. And also, if you are God and you are pragmatically attempting to woo people away from slavery, was it a practicable thing to simply, quote unquote, abolish slavery or his, oh, his no, no, idea no, 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 for, for example. Tradition. So God is a gradualist. Like, I love how he's an incremental, he's incre 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 incrementalist, right? I mean, he's a moderate. He's a political moderate God. And he was being strategic when he laid out those guidelines for how you could own slaves because he was trying to woo people into the religion. I love how God is suddenly running for freaking president of, of, he of was the trying world at to this do point. A slow roll. Yes. And finding uh, slavery yes. immoral. But how did it get there? How did it get? How did slavery happen in the first place? And did you see how he keeps referring to like under the Judeo-Christian tradition, these kinds of standards evolve because he can't can't concede that secularism might have been a part of why people began to. Uh, move away from things like, I mean, I was just looking at Genesis 38, 9, as Onan knew that the offspring would not be his. So it came uh, about when he went into his brother's wife, he wasted his seed on the ground in order not to give offspring to his brother. And God uh, uh, killed a man for spilling his seed on the ground. Like, yeah, those things don't really actually apply to modern context because, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't make any freaking sense. But like the he can't he can't talk about those updated guidelines or the ones that he doesn't necessarily abide by because it contradicts everything he he advocates for. totally and the idea that god was sort of like an incrementalist in terms of like slowly would be impractical to say that slavery is illegal yeah. now uh, or uh, you know immoral um and it's weird that the if you look at the span of time in terms of slavery and uh, the Bible and the Torah uh, and secularism, how close the relationship between secularism and no slavery is. Yeah. Um, and the idea that, of course, that the, why would you write a document 
that is supportive of slavery that people cited back, uh, you know, 200 years ago when we were maintaining slaves. 160 years ago when it people were maintaining PR. slaves. It was PR to get people to become... Uh, slow, we got to slow roll yeah. this. Yeah. So he's essentially saying God didn't mean it. Can we go back a little bit? Just so I want to hear him, his explanation. Moses, look. Yeah. Stop being... We just... I know you're against uh, incrementalism, but trust me on this. We're going to start them off. We're, we're just going to restrict how they own slaves. It'll take a couple of thousand years, but trust me on this. It's just like... And then we'll means test it. When we're talking about moral principles, it's just... It, the idea that it's a political consideration is hilarious. Give me... Give me about 5,000 years. Yeah. And uh, if I can't do it then, I'll just do another flood. Okay. All right. Right, the question it. I'm asking is, is not, was it considered right or wrong at the time it of was, biblical it slavery? It was wrong. Was it, it wrong? Uh, it was wrong then to hold a slave. Yes, it was wrong then to hold a slave, obviously. And also, if you are God and you are pragmatically attempting to woo people away from slavery, was it a practicable thing to simply, quote unquote, abolish slavery? Or here's, here's an idea for, for example, tradition? In, in the book of Exodus, uh, God, God is says, I, I think in practical? chapter 21, maybe 22, uh, says... He's, he's saying the reason why God didn't do it because it wasn't practicable. Well, he meant to say practical. We can give him that. But again, when we're talking about issues of morality and the guidebook for how one's life should be lived, which is, I mean, I don't know if that's an inappropriate definition by Shapiro's standards, but I, I, I think it's a safe assumption. Like, I... We're talking about practicality and is so like, in essence, what Shapiro is conceding is that God who wrote the book, as opposed to it being interpreted by people, uh, is lying. He's I, lying, I just, even though slavery is immoral. I he just, had to bring people over. He had to recruit folks to be a part of his religion. He, and so I, it was uh, that was the practical consideration. I think he, he does mean practicable, but it is uh, astonishing to me that God has that type of restriction. Yeah. Is God really decide like what is practical? Like if God knew that it was uh, not practicable to outlaw um, slavery, wh wh who said that God had to put it in the book in the first place? Yes. Like why did you come? Like you could have just not even addressed it, dude. It, it is to watch him stammer on that question of moral relativism is fascinating because he clearly never even contemplated like. Oh, wait a second. This, it's like, I mean, ultimately, and now look, I'm not anti-religion. Uh, I, 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 I have a religious practice myself. But the idea, it is it, the idea of fundamentalism, the idea that this is God's law and this is the end and all of it, is, um, is so... Um, fantastical that you have to build it upon lies and the problem with this is is that like you build the lies you build the lies you forget what the fundamental lie was until your question on it which is wait a second these things are immutable you're telling me that god put in instructions on how to uh hold slaves because god didn't think it was practicable to get rid of slavery but yet there is there's but he's admonitions. God. There's admonitions. <laughs> there's admonitions in there for no adultery. Like, wait, wait. Did he think that was uh, practicable? You can't sp spill your seed on the ground. I no sp spilling of the seed. Is that practicable? Or you die. I mean, think of all the things in the Bible that are not practicable. But it's just the slavery. We're going to let that. I'm going to be an incrementalist when it comes to slavery. But in terms of the masturbation, boom. We got to stop that now. Right. Right. Is there anything more? Let's play just another. Play a little more, yeah. Is it a practicable thing it, to simply, quote unquote, abolish slavery or his, is that an idea for, for example, tradition? In, in the book of Exodus, uh, God says, I, I think in chapter 21, maybe 22, uh, says that if, uh, if, if, you have a, if you have a Hebrew slave, you are to let them go after seven years. If that Hebrew slave comes to you with a wife, then after the seven years, you let them go too. If you give the Hebrew slave a wife and they have children, then after those seven years are up, you give the man a choice. He can go after the seven years, as per, but you keep his children and his wife. 
Or, and here the scripture says, you know, if, if he says, I love my wife, I love my kids and my master, as if that's going to be one of the principal considerations, then he can stay with you, at which, at which point you take him outside, you pierce his ear like cattle and he becomes your property for life. Now, here's a suggestion, for example. If it was already established that Hebrew slaves go after seven years, and it's already established that if they come with a wife, they can go after seven years, then if I give them a wife and they have children, would it not be, it, it doesn't seem to me particularly revolutionary. It doesn't seem to me the kind of thing that would have caused such social discohesion that God just couldn't have found a way to do it, to say, well, why not let the whole family go free after those seven years? With the knowledge beforehand that if you give this, this, this Hebrew slave of yours a wife and children, they'll get to leave with them. That seems to me, for example, a minor improvement that would not cause this kind of revolutionary earth shifting. He couldn't have just gotten away with slavery. Maybe that's true. But something as obvious as this to me, it seems that if that is the case, that that could have easily been done, then the failure to do so and, and the, the, uh, the, the keeping of that Hebrew uh, wife and their children as the master's property, that itself becomes an immorality that is, that is dictated. If I agree heavens. with your premises, I agree with your, your conclusion. I think that the question is to how much social discohesion would it have caused to do it? I, I can't even question. believe that this is, I mean, th this guy is being so generous to him. I will accept the fact that your all-powerful God, even after writing out essentially a how-to manual to keep slaves, yeah. which he didn't have to do, he didn't have to do, I mean, because, I mean, presumably, right, like, these, um, like, I don't understand even the argument as to, uh, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, fundamentalists believe that uh, basically the Bible is when the earth started, happened, right? Mm -hmm. There was no evolution. You can't really believe, you can't say like, well, God wasn't going to give the Bible until um, humans could read and then say that evolution isn't real. Right? And... The idea that like God had to, uh, you know, provide a, a slow runway to get rid of slavery, but we're going to do the, uh, the masturbation. That's on day one. I, I need to hear his response to this here because I think he's... Well, and, and the guy, just to be clear, what the guy is saying is like, you have all these rules. What, this is a minor change that would have freed people after seven years. Yes. The whole family. Would that have really, really impacted things after seven years? Would that have really been that much of an upheaval? I mean, remember again, too, it's not like, like your slaves, they're not going to last like they do today. Yeah. Like, you know, people didn't live that long. Um, and now, now Shapiro has to argue, well, God's made an assessment that that would be create too much social upheaval. And that's why it did. Go ahead. Your conclusion. I think that the question is to how much social discohesion would it have caused to do a thing is an open question. I think the other question that, that sort of remains open here is the, the incentive structure as to whether you accept a wife from your master. Hmm. Right. So the, 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 I don't want to get into the obstruct. I mean, we can do this literally all day. And, and there's step from the there's, I mean, the there are 70 place, volumes so. of the Talmud that are literally about this sort of stuff. And then copious writings in terms of reinterpretation yeah, of we're the, the we, first people to talk we, about yeah, exactly yeah. this is not the first time these questions have come up um and but i think the, the general point is is sort of one where either we can dive into that full time and we and you can spend your life becoming a rabbi which you know it could happen. Uh, yeah. could, could, you, you, have, you have the beard for it. It's, <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. your, your beard is further along oh, than mine. Uh, or, oh, so he just we, dodges the question. He yeah, just, of he course. Just it's too complicated. I mean, there's been a lot of commentary on this. But the bottom line is, he's saying, is essentially, I have no answer for this. Yeah. I have no answer for the moral relativism that exists there. And, you know, I mean, like I say, this uh, interviewer is being far more generous than I would. Well, isn't he on his show? Or whose show is this guy on? I think, I don't know, Shapiro's on his show. Oh, Andy, know. oh, he's hosting it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know. But um, it, the, um, it's just a, a, an amazing failure uh, to be able to articulate how that isn't moral relativism. It's just like, I love how God just has the same political considerations as God, as like Abraham Lincoln did in keeping the Emancipation Proclamation in his desk for some period of time, because he just didn't want to cause so much social upheaval. It's true. Yeah, I mean, like, that's how limited 
Ben Shapiro's perception of God is, I mean, he really does not have a high opinion of God when he thinks like basically all he has to worry about are, you know, he, he could abolish slavery, right? but he can't, he doesn't have the power to abolish slavery. He just doesn't have the power to abolish slavery and make it go smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reminded of that 30 Rock bit, uh, that show that they have called God Cop, where he's a detective investigating crimes, but he's God. And the, the show is so bad. And the question is always like, why couldn't he just tell everybody who did it? But it undercuts the premise of the bad show. That's really like where Shapiro is at mentally in the it, way he views God. It, it's sort of the idea about uh, like uh, Barack Obama with his uh, birth, certificate of live birth. Yeah. He was able to forge the certificate of live birth. But as president, you can't forge this birth certificate because uh -huh. that's made out of kryptonite. Yes. Right. That's where and if the you buck touch stops. that as Yeah, exactly. You can do, uh, we agree to conspire with you to change your, uh, your certificate of live birth, but not your birth certificate. Yeah.